Hey, what's up, Spencer? My name is everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reading three books by Mary Dowing Han, and you might be thinking, Spencer, who is this Mary Dowing Han? To which I would have to say, I don't know. All I know is that I was at the thrift store the other day and I saw these three short little ghost stories slash thrillers for only a dollar ninety nine and I thought, well that looks fun. So today we are going to be checking these stories out. So as I said, we have two ghost stories and a thriller here, so I am going to sandwich them like that, doing ghost story, thriller, ghost story, because it just feels appropriate. And I'm going to be starting this reading vlog off with all the lovely bad ones. So this is about two siblings who are spending their summer vacation with their grandmother in Vermont and their grandmother owns an inn that used to be kind of famous for hauntings but it hasn't really had any ghost sightings in the past few years and so business has kind of fallen off and so these two siblings decide to pull a Scooby-Doo and start faking some ghost hauntings but in the process of doing that they kind of awaken the ghost that do live there. I'm very interested to see how this goes because this does seem like a really fun concept, so let's jump right in. So I am already a hundred pages into All the Lovely Bad Ones, which is a little bit over halfway through, and I am pleasantly surprised with how much I am liking this. There are a lot of times in which I will be reading very short books that somehow nothing happens in it despite it being so short, but there is a lot going on in this. Every single chapter there is something that is really moving the plot forward. There are a lot of characters, but they're all very distinctive, so I'm not really getting them mixed up, which typically happens to me if there is too many characters in a story. And the haunting is very haunted full. There are a lot of ghosts going on. There's a lot of crap happening. So I am really liking what's happening and I am very excited to finish this. We are back in the corner and I have finished all the lovely bad ones and I'm going to be giving this book four stars. This was really good, really well written. A lot of stuff happened in a story that was under 200 pages, more than some 400 page books that I have read, so I was very impressed by that. And I thought that there was a very good backstory for The Haunting. I really liked the ghosts. As I said before, there were lots of unique characters, so I had a great time reading this. Which means that I am super excited to be moving on to the next book. So now we have Closed for the Season, which is a thriller. This story is about a boy who moves into a home where the previous tenant had been murdered for her money, but nobody knows where her money is, but he starts to uncover the mystery, and somehow this leads him to a, a abandoned amusement park somehow. I don't know if maybe she hid her money there, or maybe she made her money at the amusement park. I don't know, but this unsolved murder and some amusement park are connected. So I guess let's find out how. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. And damn, what a hell of a view. I feel good. You look great. I like you. I can't wait. A first time, a first day. You're so fine, I'm so lame. You sip wine, I drink straight. Don't waste time to my place. Alright, so 50 pages into close to for the season, and this is going really well. I am very impressed with how well Mary Dowinghan is able to just get the story started just right out of the gate. So she starts it off with the main character showing up at his new house and immediately the autistic next door neighbor comes over and is like, hi, did you know that somebody was murdered in your house and my grandma found their body? Like, <laughs> 
How, <laughs> what is a better way of starting a book than that? <laughs> and Arthur is definitely a character, oh my god, he is that annoying, super intrusive kid that like you would wake up in the morning and come downstairs and for some reason he was already in your house sitting at your table. We all, I kind of feel like I was kind of that kid at some points, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. I just think that Arthur is like super fun and just such a great way to learn information because he is just so out there. And apparently the connection between the murdered old woman, this isn't really much of a spoiler because they say it in the first 20 pages of the book, the connection between the murdered old woman and the amusement park is that she used to work as a ticket taker at the amusement park and at one point a bunch of money was embezzled from the park and for some reason the police thought that she was a part of it and they think that that was a part of her murder, that maybe the reason why she was murdered was because the person was looking for all of this embezzled money and thought that she had it hidden in her house and thus killed her and went through her entire house looking for this money. They weren't able to find it though, so it's still presumed that the money is hidden somewhere and I'm guessing the main character is gonna find it. But let's find out by keeping reading, I guess. There is currently no power in my apartment complex because there was a car accident right outside and I guess they must have hit one of the poles or something like that. So I guess to keep myself occupied I'm gonna have to read something which is just insanely barbaric. In this day and age I can't believe that this is what the world has come to, that I have to entertain myself with the written word. Hello. So I wasn't able to get as much reading done as I would have expected with the power being out because I kind of forgot that you need light to read. So once the sun went down and my phone died, I kind of was out of luck and had to go to bed early. <laughs> but I am about 50 pages from the end. I'm still not really sure who the killer could be. There is a very obvious suspect, but I don't think that it's him because in thrillers it never is the obvious suspect because then that wouldn't be thrilling. But I haven't exactly figured out who it might be instead. So I feel like I'm going to be very surprised when I finally figure it out. So I have officially finished Closed for the season and I'm gonna be giving this book three and a half stars. Unfortunately, the ending was a little bit disappointing for me. The reveal of who the killer was was pretty lackluster, and the twists that the author threw out were kind of minor twists. They weren't as twisty and exciting as I was hoping for them to be. So unfortunately, I was a little bit disappointed with that, but I still did have a good time reading this. And I am excited to move on to our third and final book. Which is going to be Deep and Dark and Dangerous. So this is about a girl named Allie who is going on a vacation to, I believe, a lake house where she meets a girl who is super annoying and will not stop talking about a drowning that happened when her mother was a child. So my guess already right out of the gate is that Sissy is the ghost. Haven't even started it yet, but that is what I am calling, is that Sissy is the ghost, she's the one who drowned, and it is the mom and the aunts, because the aunt is also their fault for Sissy's drowning. So I'm gonna start reading some of this tonight, and then first thing tomorrow, I have to take Lila to the vet to get some of her shots that she needs, and so I will check in with you guys after that.
am really proud of Lila because I could tell that she was really anxious and nervous to go, but we got through it. She did great. It definitely helps that we weren't even there for 15 minutes. It was really quick. I got her from the Max Fund Adoption Center and I will leave a link for them down below if you would like to help out by donating at all. They are definitely really great and they keep their adoption fees super, super low. Um, when I looked on Pet Finder for dogs to adopt, a lot of their adoption fees were like four or $500. Whereas at Max Fund, their adoption fees are only like $200, uh, which is definitely way more reasonable and they can only really keep their prices low with donations from viewers like you. Thank you. I am also about 75 pages or a third of the way through Deep and Dark and Dangerous, and it seems that I am completely right. It does seem like Sissy is the ghost, and it does seem like the mom and the aunt were the cause of her death. Obviously, they haven't fully come out and said that yet, because I'm only a third of the way in, but all of the evidence is pointing that way. It seems glaringly obvious that that's the answer. So that's really disappointing for me because books shouldn't work that way. I shouldn't like read your synopsis and already be able to know what the entire story is. So I think that I'm kind of just gonna sit down and push myself through this because I only have a little over a hundred pages left. I think I have about 115. So I just kind of want to get this done and over with at this point. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish this up and I will come in and check in with you guys when I am all done. All right, it is official. I have finished Deep and Dark and Dangerous and I was able to accurately predict a hundred percent of what was going to happen in this book. So obviously I'm going to have to give it one star because what type of book is something in which you can tell what is going to happen before it even happens because that's how trope heavy it is. So we are kind of at the end of the video. I have finished reading my three books, but let's have a really quick wrap up before we officially end. I started off with reading all the lovely bad ones and really enjoyed this, gave it four stars, had a great time, yay! Moved on to Closed for the Season, still liked it, but was a little bit disappointed, not as fun as the first one, and then ended with Deep, Dark, and Dangerous and was really disappointed by it in the writing style, the plot, the characters, just about everything, which really surprised me because this one didn't seem to come out much longer before these two, only a year or two, so the difference in quality is very surprising. I guess the big question is, would I recommend Mary Downing Han, and I guess I would have to say yes. Even though I didn't like the most recent one that I read and was kind of iffy with the second one, I was looking into her books and she has written a lot of stuff. So it seems to be the type of thing where there's definitely going to be something of hers that you like out there. I mean, she has so much that it seems impossible to not be able to find something of hers that you would like. And I do especially like the fact that these are all under 200 pages. They were consistently about 180 pages. I think that that can be good and fun in and of its own because sometimes it can be exhausting to read 300, 400, 500 plus page books all the time. So having something nice and short and sweet can be a good palate cleanser. And she did have a lot of plot in these books, despite them being 180 pages. Not the best plot all the time, but still consistently there was a lot of plot going on. So I guess the lesson of this video is, yeah, I would definitely say pick up some Mary Downing Han if you are interested in ghost stories. It seems like she writes a lot of ghost stories and more like supernatural mystery thriller type things.
So if you have gotten to the end of the video, thank you so much. If you liked this, make sure to subscribe for more and don't forget to follow me on social media. But besides that, don't forget to be a good person. Make sure that your dog is all updated on their vaccines and have a fantastic day. Bye.